Hi, welcome to Healthy Food, Happy You, where our goal is to show you the benefits of a whole foods, well-planned, plant-based diet, not only for our health, but for the entire planet as well. I'm your host, Gina Lewis, and today we have a special program for you. We are celebrating two years of the making of Healthy Food, Happy You. So we would like to show you the best moments of our past episodes. During this time in our show, we had notable plant-based nutrition experts from our area preparing easy recipes and discussing the benefits of this type of diet. The nutrition experts who came to our kitchen during these two years are Tracy McCorder, MPH and public health nutritionist from our first show who made a recipe from her book, By Any Greens Necessary. Sharon Greenspan, nutrition coach and board certified health practitioner. Linda Carter, the soulfully divine chef. Dominique Kaufman from zazania.biz. Sherilyn L. Tompkins from fabianola.com. Stephanie Hall, nutrition coach and raw vegan chef. Dr. Ruby Lathan, holistic health and nutrition consultant. Dr. Keita Vanterpool, chiropractor by profession and health and wellness consultant. Brandy Rito, health coach and cooking instructor, founder of Life with Spice Wellness. Juliet Tahar and Jennifer Ware from Healthy Living Inc. And Jill Eckert, who is the Nutrition Program Manager at the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM. Each of these guests prepared plant-based recipes and talked about what they are doing to help people become healthier with proper nutrition and exercise. Let's watch a clip of episode number two with Sharon Greenspan. This episode was hosted by Dominique Kaufman, so let's take a look. It's good to have you with us today. Thank you. How are you? I'm great. Good. Um, how long have you uh, been a raw foodist? Oh, since about 2005. How did your friends and family, uh, people around you, react to your, your new way of eating? Oh, the same way they do whenever anyone changes their diet. Yeah. They think it's weird and you're not eating enough. And are you really getting the right nutrition with that? Lots of questions. But the dominant question is always, what do you do for proteins? Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, to our viewer, I'm sure they have this question on their lips. What is your answer to that? My answer is that it's twofold. One we have too much protein in our diet. I have read so many studies linking excessive protein to cancer. And the other part is, you know, I actually lived in Africa for a number of years, and I lived in Ghana where there is a disease called kwashiorkor, which is protein deficiency. But there are no documented cases of kwashiorkor in all of North America, including Canada and Mexico. So are you getting enough protein? <laughs> I guarantee you are. So as I said, it's a green smoothie. And you see I have lots of different greens laid out here. And you can use different kinds of greens. And in fact, it's important to change the greens that we use every mm -hmm. time you make it. Um, even though they're all green, they do have some subtle differences in the nutrition. Okay. Uh, these are some of my favorites. This is curly green kale, okay. and there are different kinds of kale in the market. Mm. I also like uh, Swiss chard to me has almost a little bit of creaminess to it. Mm -hmm. It's a very filling vegetable. This is mint, which we're going to use as a condiment. And then lettuce. We've all seen boxes of lettuce like this. So when you take it as a smoothie, you're still getting that fiber. Mm -hmm. You're getting the greens. The chlorophyll also serves to steady the blood sugar. And that's one of the things when you start out that way, first thing in the morning, you'll find that it's more steady throughout the day. So for example, my clients who are pre-diabetic say, oh, you know, I felt good all day. Or uh, people with ADHD say that they felt steadier and they had more concentration through the day. Um, people say they're not reaching for that snack at 3 o'clock in the afternoon because they haven't had the sugar high and crash. So what I recommend is look for bananas that are this color the best that you can. Yellow. Yellow. Okay. And then you want to let them ripen even further. So when they start to have the brown spots, that's when the carbohydrate has been converted to sugar and when it's most digestible. I was making green smoothies for a long time and everybody says, well, but Sharon, what should I put in a green smoothie? I don't know how to make it. <laughs> and 
as I mentioned, it's really important to change the greens mm -hmm. all the time. So I created this magnet that has built into it how to have different greens. There are four columns on here. You start out with column A, which is your main green. So you know I put lots of lettuce in there, lots of kale and chard. So okay. pick one from column A. Mm -hmm. Column B is a secondary green, something like parsley, cilantro, dill, something that has a more pungent flavor. A condiment. Yeah. No, no, but I call it a secondary green. Okay. Condiments are a little different. Okay. Then I suggest that you add a fruit. Mm -hmm. Or in the evening time, I often have a green smoothie for dinner. Or if I come home from work and I'm really rushed but I'm really hungry, I'll have it before dinner. And in that case, instead of a fruit, I might use a vegetable. Or I might use something that's a combination like cucumber. Mm -hmm. I might use radish. I might use celery. So I'm picking a fruit or a vegetable. And then that last column is your condiment. Remember I said we used mint today. Uh -huh. You might want to use lemon. You might want to use cinnamon. So just pick something from the column and then you'll have your green smoothie. Definitely Sharon Greenspan has a lot of training and coaching experience. To find out more about her books and workshops, please visit our website and search for episode number dos. By the way, Sharon Greenspan is our official nutrition consultant, so thank you, Sharon, for being a valuable contributor to our show. One of the main focuses our, of our program is to demonstrate that if you involve kids during food preparation, they will most likely make healthier eating choices in the future. It has been proven that we can prevent numerous illnesses just by the way we eat. According to the publication, Nutrition for Your Kids by the Cancer Project from the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, the earlier children start eating a nutritional diet rich in cancer-fighting foods, the greater their chances of staying healthy for life. In our area, childhood obesity and diabetes are on the rise, so we are committed to doing something about it. Kids love to cook, and our show has proven that over the past two years. For example, during the 2011 Farm to School Month, our cameras went into three District of Columbia schools. At Wilson High School, we interviewed the D.C. Public Schools Director of Food and Nutrition Services, Jeffrey Mills, while he was launching the Eat More Salad program. Our cameras also followed Chef Lauren Bonderpool, the Queen of Greens, during food demonstrations at Cleveland Elementary School and Ballou High School. Now let's watch Chef Lauren Vanderpool and the students from Mrs. Johnson's third grade class going to the Common Goods City Farm located on 4th and V Streets to pick vegetables. The Queen of Greens helped these students prepare delicious and nutritious salad. Check out this sweet footage. Desiree, come on down, Desiree. Woo! Let's see who else we want to come on yeah. down. You've been good. Come on down. What's your name? And we need your hat on. Vincent. Come on, Vincent. Throw that hat on and come on down. Give Vincent a round of applause. <laughs> Woo! All right. Let's see. We all, I think we only need two people for the salad dressing, but we're going to need some help over here with the others. So what we're going to do, mm -hmm. we've got some mustard. Who likes mustard? Okay, well we're gonna we're gonna make a uh, a dressing with agave nectar. Anybody ever heard of agave nectar? What is agave nectar? You know what it tastes like? You don't? It's sweet. It's it's so good. So instead of using white sugar, which kind of makes us tired, it's not so good for us. You know, we're gonna use an alternative called agave nectar, and agave nectar is grown, it's indigenous to Mexico, and it's so good. It comes from a cactus, the inside of a cactus, and we use it in order to give flavor, give sweetness to our food. So you can use it on your pancakes, your waffles, you can use it in, as a substitute in your baked goods if you were baking a cake or something, you can use this instead. Also, uh, like I said, you can use it in a salad dressing, soup, or anything. So we're going to start with, we're going to have one of them add a piece of onion 
And just to give a little bit of flavor, we've got this lovely basil here we're gonna add into our dressing as well. Let's give it a squirt of agave nectar. We're gonna do about two tablespoons, sorry, two teaspoons of agave nectar. Go ahead, I'll tell you when to stop. Keep going. Okay, we'll do three. <laughs> okay, that's good. And then I'm going to add some of this extra virgin coconut oil. And I'm going to do a nice, because we want to, we're making a salad dressing. So we're going to put about two heaping tablespoons. We're going to put, we're going to put three heaping tablespoons of our organic mustard. Mmm. Yeah. I just put a little bit of water in there, okay? I'm gonna start cutting up some apples, okay? Yes. Awesome. So we're gonna give it a little blend. All right, so we're gonna keep it rolling. So we've got our, our lettuce and our Swiss chard all cut up here. I think we're ready. Thank you so much, Desiree and uh, sous chef Vincent. You can go back to your seats. And now it's time to dress our salad. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour this all over our greens. Yum. And then we're gonna take our tongs. These are called tongs. And we're gonna just give it a nice little mix here. Beautiful. Yeah, that's gorgeous. Right on. We want your come <laughs> Okay, well then I'm gonna have to come back. I can't resist that one. Yay! We a drizzle, a drizzle, a drizzle, a drizzle. Awesome. Greens are great. I'm a fan of people who eat their greens. It's so good for us. Again, it makes us strong and beautiful, intelligent. What are we gonna do when we go home? And from now on, what are we gonna be doing? Eat vegetables. Let me hear it loud and clear. What are we gonna be doing from now on? Eat vegetables. And what else? What else are we eating? Fruit. All right, awesome. Thank you so much for being an amazing. Yeah, every day for being an amazing class. Give yourself. As you saw, these kids had a great time and learned how easy it is to make nutritious and delicious salads. By the way, Lauren Vanderpool is very active in our area, collaborating with our First Lady Michelle Obama's initiative on working against childhood obesity. Good for you, Lauren. We are looking forward to the 2012 Farm to School Month. We'll be right back after this public service announcement. And if these people got off the couch and walk, we wouldn't have fat people this way. Do you know how many kids are risking their health by eating unhealthy foods, stuffing themselves, and not getting any exercise? Thank goodness. You got here just in time. Where's the problem? In there. But doctors know that our children need to be pointed in the right direction when it comes to food. Hey, what's going on? What are you doing? I can't control him. He won't listen to me. Mom, they're taking my ice cream! Pass me those veggie burgers. Here, try this, the original fast food. A diet rich in fruits, vegetables, high fiber vegetarian foods can help them grow up healthy. To find out more, call for a free booklet or visit our website, kidsgethealthy.org. Thanks. Well, another family turned around and 200 million to go. We are back with our second anniversary special episode. I have been so honored to collaborate with the producer of Healthy Food Happy You, Jorge Mera, to bring wholesome programming to the Fairfax viewers and the worldwide YouTube audience. This is my sixth episode as host, and I really, really enjoy watching people's lives transform after they switch to plant-based diets. Headaches, body aches, Obesity, chronic fatigue, asthma, diabetes, even cancer somehow completely disappeared 
when people began nourishing their bodies and avoiding the processed and artificial toxins that are all too common in the American diet. Not only does this lifestyle have a profound impact on health, but a balanced plant-based diet enormously benefits our environment and animal welfare. What better gift on earth can we give our children than the gift of health, compassion, and a promising future? My first episode as host was actually about raising vegan children. So we invited two other like-minded mothers who are raising their kids on a plant-based diet. Here's a bit of that episode. Thank you for watching Healthy Food, Happy You. I'm Gina Lewis, your new host, and I am so excited about all this, the shows we have in store for you this year. Today's show is near and dear to my heart. It's about raising vegan children, and I'd love to introduce our awe-inspiring guests to you today. We have Amy Sharp and Addison, who is eight, and Lillian, who is six and a half, and they made a decision as a family two years ago to become vegan. And we have Maria McCorder, and her daughter, Mara, who is six and a half, and she's been vegan all her life. Maria made the decision to become vegan 16 and a half years ago. And Maria also blogs for chocolateandarugula.com. Thank you all so much for being here. My son was actually having um, to use a nebulizer. He was having to use albuterol on a regular basis. I've always been very careful about everything that we eat and what they're exposed to, and so I was very frustrated and started to just look online to see why he might be asthmatic. Like, it didn't make sense to me just to have him medicated. Right. And so as I did my research, I came across an article by um, one of the pediatricians, I, I think it was actually the chief of pediatrics at the Johns Hopkins Institute, who um, had said that um, over 50% of American children are um, diagnosed or, or misdiagnosed um, who actually have a milk allergy. That's so true. And, um, and so we cut milk out of our diet. Mm. And um, it, was, it was incredible. I mean, literally within two weeks, we noticed a difference because he, he has a lot of allergies anyhow, so he has a constant runny nose, but it was just such a big difference. Um, and, and when we did that, we didn't have to um, use any more medication. That we is were, amazing. We were basically done with it. Wow. And so it was our kind of miracle cure. But in doing that, in taking that step to cut milk out, it opened up this world of information where uh, we learned a lot about nutrition. We learned a lot more about where our food comes from. And it um, was almost immediately after that that... Um, we decided that we were going to be vegan because um, we didn't feel comfortable with any other yeah. path. And you became vegan 16 and a half years ago before you had children. What sparked that change? Um, mainly in college. Because I was in school about 20, 25 years ago. The ramen noodle day. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's and a good time to go vegan. It is a good time. You know, you're, you're you know, just kind of questioning everything. Question, you know, I was very kind of politically involved. and you know, exploring issues about feminism and racism and homophobia mm -hmm. and all these things. And so food was just another thing that I yeah. questioned. Although, uh, like Amy, I do have to give credit for my mother, to my mother as well, because she's always, always, always been relatively health conscious. So we didn't have the cookie jar. We had total cereal instead of Fruit Loops. And so she's already always had this kind of health consciousness. So yeah. it kind of, um, con you know, continued in college and, um, my younger sister actually was uh, in school as well, and she heard a lecture uh, by Dick Gregory talking about um, the importance of being vegan. And so she was like, I heard this great lecture, we have to become vegan. And so we, you know, we started to do more research and you know, kind of did it you know, as a family as well. Yeah. I mean, it's so interesting that people think that because you're a vegan, it actually limits your diet. But in fact, what I found is that it actually opens you up to more food because mm -hmm. you're, you know, you just, you generally tend to be more open to trying new things. Exactly. You know, what are avocados? What are dates? You know, what are, you know, these things that... Um, arugula. That, arugula, exactly. Yes. Um, so I think it, in, in many ways, turned me into a foodie. I started, you know, growing vegetables, going to farmer's markets, things like that. Hi, we're back with Addison, Lillian, and Mara. And we, our kids are gonna show you how to make some yummy vegan food. 
One of the things that I like to do to incorporate vegetables and fruits into my children's diet is salsa. You can do vegetable salsa, fruit salsa, vegetable and fruit salsa. This is just tomatoes, cucumbers, red bell peppers, green bell peppers, onions, lime juice, um, maybe some cumin. I mean, it's really hard to go wrong with salsa. Add some cilantro in there, just flavor it to taste. Would you ladies like to try some salsa and see what you think? You're not afraid to just dig in there, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> How is it? So good. <laughs> Yum. So that's an easy way to get fruits and veggies in your diet. Thank you to Maria McCorder and Amy Sharp and their children. Amazing, yet completely logical that Amy's son no longer struggles with allergies and asthma after removing dairy products and meat from his diet. For more information about Maria McCorder's blog, Chocolate and Arugula, go to our website www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com and search for episode number 16. There have been occasions where cameras of Healthy Food Happy You attended events related to health, nutrition, and green living. For instance, March 9, 2011, we were the only media covering the first screening in the U.S. of the documentary Pig Business in the U.S. Capitol Visitor Center. Other events were the Vegetarian Society of D.C. Thanksgiving celebrations, the 2010 D.C. Green Festival, the 2011 D.C. Veg Fest organized by Compassion Over Killing and Vegetarian Society of D.C., and at the D.C. Power Shift 2011, we had the chance to interview Josh Fox, the director of the documentary Gasland. There have been two occasions where we had authors on our show. The first one was Merlene Vassal, author and novel of The Vampire and the Vegan. Let me show you her awesome book, The Vampire and the Vegan. Thanks, Merlene. And another time was Dr. Will Tuttle, author of The World Peace Diet. Definitely check it out. It's a great book. We had the opportunity to have in our studio Dottie and Steve Seitz from the Puppet and Storyworks. They brought a dragon chef puppet called Julia Wilde, who showed Steve how to make a recipe from the book by any greens necessary by Tracy McCorder. After the cooking segment, the producer of our show, Jorge Mera, interviewed Dottie and Steve Seitz. Steve Seitz shared how his health had improved just by becoming vegan. Stories like Steve Seitz, who claimed that a plant-based diet saved his life, is very common. Actually, several of our guests discussed similar experiences during the taping of our show. For instance, Linda Carter, the soulfully divine chef, lost weight and reversed diabetes type 2. And Dr. Ruby Lathan, who is now a holistic health and nutrition consultant, reversed thyroid cancer by changing her diet to a mostly raw, whole foods, well-planned, plant-based diet. That is a mouthful. I'm inspired, and I hope you are too. We would like to thank all of the crew volunteers who helped operate our cameras, sounds, lighting, graphics, etc. Seriously, without them, this show would not be possible. Thank you. And we can't finish this anniversary episode without thanking Dominique Kaufman, Gigi Smith, Jonah Rowe, Sherilyn L. Tompkins, and Gina Ingraham for hosting some of the past shows. Special thanks to Shermaine Ford who hosted a few shows for her recipe cooking segments like the very delicious and nutritious quinoa salad. By the way, our producer Jorge Mera jumped in front of the camera to prepare tostones a recipe from his native country, Ecuador. Charmaine Ford helped Jorge during his five minutes of fame. Then she prepared another of her favorite recipes called Satan Stir Fry. Check out our website, www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com if you would like to watch these and other past episodes. And finally, 
we would like to express special local music composer John Rawls. He composed the music theme for our show. John has been involved in creating music for other shows here at FPA Channel 10 for several films and TV web series. Also, we would like to thank Tom Dunn for the graphics for our intro. Before we finish today's episode, we have several upcoming surprises. We are preparing short fitness segments for each show, so you can not only eat healthier, but exercise your way to a better physique in only a few minutes a day. You won't want to miss our beautiful and motivating fitness consultant, so be sure to tune in next month. We also hope to have Dr. Bernard on an upcoming episode. He is a fabulous doctor with PCRM and has written many books on reversing diabetes. This is just one of them. So if you know anyone who is struggling with diabetes, you won't want to miss this mind-blowing show. Our next episode will have a new kitchen and somebody new to help me host the show. His name will be revealed during our next show, so stay tuned to see our lovely veggie monster. Your kids will definitely want to watch and hopefully eat their veggies. My name is Gina Lewis, and for more information about our TV show, go to www.healthyfoodhappyyou.com and find us on Facebook. See you next month. Come say hi, Veggie Monster. Don't be shy. Just us for Among Friends. Can you wave to the camera? That's right. Say hi, kids. Are you going to help? Oh, you don't need to be shy. Are you going to help us host the show from now on? We'll practice between now and then, okay? We'll do that. So we'll see you next month. Bye, kids. Can you blow kisses? Aww. Can I have a kiss?